There's been about a dozen small explosions in northern cities in Iraq. This is rather a dangerous area for me. That's why I'm dressed like this. I'm trying to not attract as much attention. Uh, foreign journalists have been banned from covering these protests, from entering the Anbar province altogether. Well, that's right. As you can probably see, and at least here behind me, the city is going wild. This is just moments after the uh, Venezuelan Electoral Council announced that Hugo Chavez will indeed remain the president for a third term. He'll be leading the country for another six years. I'm standing in Dahia. This is a suburb in southern Beirut where thousands of people had turned out to protest the controversial film. Well, of course, it is the first day of the third round of negotiations between the five permanent members of the UN Security Council plus Germany and Iran as officials scramble to try to find some sort of diplomatic agreement on Iran's nuclear ambitions. The Taliban have been very clear in their position. Uh, they do not see the Karzai government as being legitimate. They've openly called it as a puppet of the United States. They they refuse to hold any sort of negotiations, much less uh, view the Constitution as legitimate or offer any sort of candidates. Osama bin Laden has been killed by U.S. Special Forces. Uh, we're hearing that it was not a drone attack. This is actually a firefight on the ground. This shelled out building stands in Beirut's Green Line, which for nearly two decades divided the city. Christians to the east, Muslim communities in the west during Lebanon's bitter civil war. But as the armed conflict in Syria just across the border continues to escalate, many here fear that the fragile peace could once again be shattered and that sectarian tensions could yet again lead to another civil war. Muslim Brotherhood has gained support throughout the Arab world with its model of combining political activism with charity work. Here in Jordan, the Brotherhood is responsible for building schools, clinics and hospitals like this one, a critical lifeline for the nation's poor. These Peshmerga soldiers are on alert 24 hours a day. They're guarding the Kurdish front line of the so-called disputed territory. Now, no Iraqi soldiers are allowed beyond this point. If either army advances, if there's even a single misfire, it could spark a new war. Hundreds of thousands of Syrians came to Jordan seeking a better life. But here at the Zaatari refugee camp, lives are collapsing all over again. They fled Syria to escape a bloody war, only to find themselves fighting a fresh battle just to survive. Now behind me is the way to one of the illegal border crossings between Lebanon and Syria. Weapons, fighters and supplies go into Syria while refugees fleeing the violence come out. But by no means is this a safe or easy journey. Frequent shelling as well as a large minefield on the Syrian side of the border makes crossings like these a deadly gamble. This is Venezuela's Barrio Pectare, the largest slum in all of Latin America. For decades, the thousands of Venezuelans who lived here had no access to any sort of medical care. That is until a Chavez social program to open clinics like this one. Here, Venezuelans get access to doctor's checkups, medical services, free medicine. For the families living here in this garbage dump on the outskirts of Baghdad, the trash has become their sole means of survival. They have no other place to turn to for help, nowhere else to go to call home. And they keep asking why a country so rich in oil can leave them with nothing but these scraps to survive on. Now for people living up in those slums or barrios, there used to be no way to get down to the city to find work or go to school. Simply walking down those hills used to take about an hour and a half. There used to be no public transportation until President Hugo Chavez built these cable cars. Checkpoints like this one have become a common sight all across Iraq. They've become a fixture in a country still plagued by violence. They're supposed to make Iraq more secure, but attacks continue with regular frequency, turning these checkpoints into a symbol of a country still at war. The oil fires illustrate the main reason that this land is so hotly contested. Kirkuk is sitting on an estimated 10 billion barrels of oil and is responsible for a large chunk of Iraq's current output. That's enough to sustain an independent state should the Kurds get their way and annex this disputed territory. It's also enough to bankrupt Iraq if the oil revenue is lost. I'm Lucy Kafanov in Beirut reporting in Ka, Eastern Lebanon. Caracas, Baghdad. al Zatari refugee camp in Jordan. Beirut, Lebanon. Caracas, Venezuela.